You're watching The Issue Is. One of the most important political nights in American history. We're no longer respected as a country. You're the sucker. You're the loser. With us for insights and analysis, Politico's Melanie Mason, KFI's John Cobo, strategist Brian Goldsmith, former hardball host Chris Matthews, plus That's Fox right, 11's Phil Schumann live with voters, and Marla Teus fact-checking the candidates. A very special edition of The Issue Is starts right now. We take you live right now to the spin room in Atlanta, which will soon be full of Republican and Democratic officials trying to put their best spin on this. Also happening right now, a watch party at the Intercontinental Hotel in downtown Los Angeles, where lots of folks have been gathering. Phil Schumann is talking to them. We also want to take you live right now to Hollywood. That's where Robert F. Kennedy Jr. is hosting his own debate he calls the real debate. Now we want to welcome you inside our Fox 11 studios to a very special edition of The Issue Is. I'm Alex Michelson. Thanks so much for being with us. We've got a great panel here tonight. Melanie Mason is here from Politico. John Cobalt is here, the host of The John uh, Cobalt Show on KFI AM 640. We also have Brian Goldsmith and Chris Matthews standing by as well. But let's go to each of you. Melanie, let's start with you. One word to describe the debate and your big takeaway from the night. I'll cheat and use two words, but they'll be compound. Low energy. I mean, I think that that's Trump's favorite insult, and I think that that is the way that a lot of people will come away looking at President Biden tonight. If he was hoping to assuage fears about his age, he did not do it. And Trump was low energy for him in a way that I think actually benefited him. Mm -hmm. And so I think that the contrast, low energy, and for Biden's case, it hurt a lot. For Trump's, not so much. John, one word. Excruciating. <laughs> <laughs> if you hadn't invited me here and I didn't like you, <laughs> I would have turned on the Dodger game. That was rough. Yeah. It was over in the first five minutes. Yeah. First reaction I had when I saw Biden was like, oh no, it's really, he's, he's in bad shape. Yeah. I mean, he is in terrible shape and they shouldn't have put him out there. They should have said, you know, he's sick tonight, we'll do this tomorrow. That was, that was tough. Brian Goldsmith, to you, your one word and your big takeaway. Uh, sad with an exclamation point. And my takeaway is the Biden campaign did this to try to move the contest from a referendum on Biden to a choice. Um, and that did not happen tonight. Uh, there's going to be a big debate within the Democratic Party about how we move for forward here in the wake of a very uh, depressing event tonight. My one word is disaster. Uh, and the private conversation that's been happening for months about potentially replacing Joe Biden at the head of the Democratic ticket will now become very public very soon. Uh, so we want to find out from you what you are thinking as well. We've got a poll right now at foxla.com slash vote. Uh, who do you think won the debate? Well, here's the current numbers. Right now, Donald Trump at 88 percent, Joe Biden at 12 percent. That's like Saddam Hussein numbers uh, for our <laughs> voters right now. Uh, so you can vote there. We'll be updating the numbers throughout our show. We are asking you, what is your one word to describe the debate? We hope you'll uh, weigh in on social media using the hashtag Fox11Debate on your social media channels, including X, and we'll get your comments throughout the show. But let's hear from some SoCal voters right now. Fox11's Phil Schumann at a watch party in downtown L.A. Phil, what are voters telling you? Well, Alex, uh, similar to what you were saying, we're at the swanky Continental Club, a night spot downtown with about 100 people. There were cheers, there was laughter, there was cringes. Let me start with this gentleman here. Your, your thoughts on what you watched tonight? Well, I thought it was a bit entertaining. Uh, as far as performance, I always say animation-wise, Trump probably was the winner. As far as factual content, it has to go to Biden. All right, thank you. And uh, what do you, what do you, uh, how do you judge what you saw? I'm literally on the fence. I'm a very undecided voter. I came with a very open mind. Yeah. Light on specifics. Uh, good energy from both of the candidates. Uh, I, uh, Did you I learn was, anything? I was impressed by how well Biden handled himself. It was really? very light on specifics, but it is a debate format. But I was impressed by his stamina. Let me ask you, sir. Uh, was there a winner? Was there a loser? Who impressed you, if anyone? I'm, I'm a I'm a solid Biden supporter, and I I just think Trump looked kind of the best he's ever looked, and I thought 
I thought some, Biden, some I thought, cringing during some Biden moments here. I thought this was not a good a, a good venue for for Biden. You know, I look at him more as a leader with an integrity who's assembled a team. Yeah. Um, you know, being in the spotlight and having to come up with the answer right away. Not his strong suit. Definitely. Right. Well, Thank that you. was what I learned. Not his strong suit. All right. <laughs> Can I ask you a quick question? Um, Absolutely. What are, you, what are your thoughts on what you saw tonight? Was there a winner? Was there a loser? There Did someone impress you? Absolutely a winner. It was... Um, President Trump, he was much more cognizant, coherent, alert, um, and I think he proved that to the country tonight. Did you hear anything that you didn't already agree with, or anything new? Um, not anything new. Um, I think that his position on immigration yeah. and the economy um, was consistent. All right, thank you. Thank you. Oh, we got time for one more. Let me ask this young lady here. What, what was sort of the takeaway from this debate, do you think? So, uh, I'm a Biden supporter, but sadly, I think that Trump had a very strong appearance simply because of Biden's, I think, age-related problems of yeah. really articulating and communicating well. Like, I am German, so I'm not even Native American, so I had really trouble understanding what Biden was saying. So, I think that people who were, like, on the brink, yeah. on the verge of deciding they would probably more tend towards Trump. Thank you. One one word. Analysis. You know, it's a little annoying when they can't stay on point. It's like, let's talk about the border. No, let's talk about uh, what we did in Afghanistan. Or just, it's all over the place. Thank you. So, the general consensus that you heard, Alex, a strong performance by President Trump, not so much by President Biden. All right, More Phil. Later. Back to you. We'll check back in with you a little bit later. Phil Schumann, thank you. We want to take you live right now. This is uh, happening on the floor of the spin room. That's Elise Stefanik, uh, who is a congresswoman who would like to be Donald Trump's VP pick. Probably not going to be, but she's doing the spin right now uh, for Donald Trump on the floor of that Atlanta spin room. We want to bring now into our conversation Chris Matthews, who is, of course, an author, uh, the longtime host of Hardball on MSNBC. Uh, Chris, it's great to talk with you. We're asking people what's their one word for the debate. What's your one word for the debate? Well, I have to say, it's like they, like in the old cowboy movies, choose your weapons. Biden didn't choose any weapon. I don't understand it. He he let uh, Dana Bash lead the conversation. He should have started off with this guy lied about the last election. He's lying about the next one. He says if he doesn't win, it was stolen. He's always lying. He lied about abortion. He told me I was in the room. He said it to my face. I want there to be some form of punishment, punishment for women who choose an abortion, who have an abortion. That's his position. That's where he comes from. And he let him do all this stuff. But he was very smart. Trump. He talked about Afghanistan, which was a terrible withdrawal. There should have been people fired, that's for sure. And there was no one fired. It was interesting he worked on that. I also thought tonight we learned something. I think his VP nominee, which will be coming up before the convention, which is only a couple of weeks, is going to be Doug Bergen of North Dakota. He talked about the gold that lives below the surface of the earth, that you could go down and get all that oil and all that, all that fuel. I really think that's what he wants to do, because it's his way of addressing the climate situation in his way. I really think that's what he gave away tonight, and I think it's surprising that he did it. Well, your energy uh, compared to his energy is quite, <laughs> quite the contrast. So coming into tonight, Chris, uh, Donald Trump was ahead in pretty much every he single swing ahead. state poll, which is a big reason why Biden's team wanted to do this debate now, to reset the narrative. Where do you think the polling goes from here? And do you think that there will be a real conversation about replacing Joe Biden as the Democratic nominee? Okay, I'm not going to win any friends here at minimum. This nominee for president needs a new team. The people that told him to come out for raising taxes as a goodbye message to the American people, nobody hears that $400,000 limit. They hear a president wants to raise taxes, and they don't like it. They got enough costs in their life, and, and it's not going to work. You got to give people hope and inspiration. He went to Normandy. He should have continued on that front. Talk about patriotism. Talk about the Peace Corps. Talk about the Moon Program. About our program to try to develop space. All these forward-looking things on infrastructure, I-95 in Pennsylvania, the bridge in Baltimore. Everywhere they want their roads fixed and positive things done by the government. Why didn't he do that? I didn't hear anything forward-looking. And that's what Jack Kennedy and all the successful presidents ran on, hope. 
It was on their posters. It was in their words. I didn't hear it tonight. But do you think that Joe Biden can recover from this? Well, not for a week. Uh, I, I don't know why he had a raspy voice. He did. He says he had already... a cold. <laughs> That's what they, okay. they leaked in the middle okay. of the in the middle of the debate. Uh, Christoph of the New York Times is already calling. It. I've been looking at the wires just recently. He's already calling for a new candidate. I do see the surrogate was there, Gavin Newsom, the governor of California. You know, he Gavin Gavin could be something. He could just say about Trump. He could use words to be a little tougher than me. Even he could say, you know, this guy just told an audience, a rally audience in uh, Detroit, that he carried California in 2020. He lost it by five million votes. It's a big, bold lie. And he gets away with it because these people that call themselves MAGA people will cheer anything he says. He could, I mean, I think he should just go out and get a, start a fight, a separate fight going with, the, with uh, Trump right now. But apart from it being a surrogate, there is, there is talk, clearly. We heard it tonight. The Times is talking about it. It's a fact to talk about. I don't think, I don't, I don't want to do it. I'm going to let Nicholas Kristof do it and others to do it, but they've already begun the conversation because if you can't debate this guy between now and November, how are you going to beat him? How yeah. do you beat the guy in the, in the room with him? you got to get in the room with him 10 feet from... Nixon could have outthought Kennedy. Everybody knew that. He had a lot more things on his mind. Yeah. But when they got in that room 10 feet apart, something stops one guy from taking the other guy on. And I think it was his voice. It is his age. You know... Yeah. He's got to make this decision, and Jill Biden, they've got to make a decision. It's not about Kamala Harris taking over and things like that. He's not going to die and all that. But does he have the energy to take on a guy who's willing to be unrestrained by the truth? The truth yeah. means nothing yeah. to, the, the, the pre, to former President sure. uh, Trump. And I think yeah. it matters because the guy is so good with the words. He is a salesman, and he didn't stop selling tonight. Yeah. Yeah. And he did prepare, by the way. Yeah. He did prepare. Those, those connections. I mean, he remembered yeah. Afghanistan. He went back there again and Chris. again. He went to the illegals. He went with the rape. He went with all that stuff. Yes, he did. And he just laughed yeah. off. And by the way, everybody yeah. knows in the Republican Party, from Mitch McConnell on down, that he did January 6th. Right. That he was there presiding over it, sitting in the White, or in the White House for hours sure. while that was going on. He called those people into action. He said, stop the steal. He sent them up with a message to, to stop that process right, from Chris, going on a candidate vote. Chris. And he did it, and he, he could have stopped it, and he didn't do it. Chris Matthews, thank you so much for your perspective. Always great to talk with you. It's great to be on. Thank you. Thank you. So I have a look at our poll results and how it is at 92% <laughs> win for Donald Trump over Joe Biden, getting 8%. When we come back, Marla Tejas facts checks the candidates. Uh, we're looking right now at a live picture from the spin room. More of a special edition of The Issue is when we come back. A live look at the spin room right now. My colleague Marla Tejas has spent the night fact-checking the candidates. Marla, what did you find? Well, Alex, we are starting with the issue of abortion. It was two years ago that the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. And tonight, President Biden claimed, if elected, that former President Trump will sign a national abortion ban into law. Here's that moment. If the MAGA Republicans, he gets elected, and the MAGA Republicans control the Congress, and they pass a universal ban on abortion, period, across the board, at six weeks or seven or eight or ten weeks, something very, very conservative. Is he going to sign that bill? I'll veto it. He'll sign it. Now, by all accounts, that claim is false. It is true Trump's Supreme Court justice appointees were part of the majority that overturned Roe, but Trump recently told the All In podcast, quote, no, I would not support a national ban. And then tonight, you heard him double down on that, saying it is a decision that belongs to the states. Now, on the issue of taxes, you just heard Chris Matthews mention this. Trump claimed Biden will hike taxes times four in this moment. He's the only one I know. He wants to raise your taxes by four times. He wants to raise everybody's taxes by four times. He wants the Trump tax cuts to expire. So everybody, including the two of you, are going to pay four to five times. Nobody ever heard of this before. 
Well, that claim is mixed. It's both true and false. Here's where it's false. The president's budget cuts taxes for working families. The White House saying no one earning less than $400,000 per year will pay a penny in new taxes. But here's where it's true. The plan seeks to make big corporations and special interests, quote, pay their fair share. And it would raise tax rates on large corporations who received breaks under Trump's 2017 tax break and and this is a big and the plan does quadruple the stock buyback tax from 1% to 4%. So there you go. There is that quadrupling of taxes. Now, Alex, another moment that's trending online. You can come back to me here in studio. When President Biden claimed he has the support of the Border Patrol Union, well, that union took to X right away to say, quote, to be clear, we never have and never will endorse Biden. I know you found some more nuggets on social media yourself, Alex. Yeah, and we're also asking people, Marla, on social media, what's their one word reaction to the debate? Let's put some of that up on the screen on how people are reacting. Uh, some of those comments uh, include this, bloodbath, the one word. Uh, this one, dumpster fire from Julie Hamill. I guess that's two words. Uh, other comments you see here, help. That's <laughs> a, a comment there. Uh, and another one, broken. Uh, thank you to, in, in this one, uh, saying low point. Uh, so thank you to everybody who's uh, writing in. You can continue to write in there. We bring our panel uh, back in right now. Uh, Melanie, we just uh, were talking with Chris Matthews about this idea of what's going on behind the scenes in the Democratic Party. And there is, what would actually be involved in Joe Biden potentially not being the nominee? I mean, the logistics are daunting, to say the least. But I also want to talk about what is sort of the more... Um, abstract but just as important which is that democrats have a credibility issue now they have just spent the last year trying to tell the american people that he's fine he's up for the job and if democrats are now going to turn around and say we want to replace our nominee how are those same democrats going to sell that case so i think that there is the logistical question of actually replacing a nominee but there's just as important making the sale and i think that that's going to be a tall order for democrats now what do you think happens now for normal people normal people know they've been lied to all year he doesn't have twice the energy of someone half his age. How many times did you hear nonsense like that? He, he, that, that oh, the, oh the, it's edited. You know, the, the video's edited. He's not wandering off. Oh, he froze. No, he didn't really freeze. You know, uh, 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 constantly they were lying and telling me that I, what I saw with my eyes and what I heard with my ears wasn't actually happening. And I resented that. And a lot of people resent that. And Democrats coming into the night hope that the opposite would be true, well, that people uh, would see that Biden really is great, and they felt that, that Trump had been lying about him. How could that happen yeah. when he's in deep into the aging process? Let, Those things don't reverse well, themselves. And Trump also is, is not exactly young. Uh, Brian Goldsmith, let's go to you. What are the logistics involved if, in fact, the Democrats want to replace Joe Biden? I'm sure it's painful. Uh, I think what happens is the Democratic National Committee um, votes on a new candidate if the candidate with the the delegates and therefore the nomination, which is President Biden, were to decide to step down. Uh, I'm not an expert on the delegate rules. I don't think that that is the big issue here. The big issue is inside the president's mind and um, you know what decision he wants to make for the future. And I'll tell you, why this is so painful for me and lots of other Democrats. This is a good man. This is a good man who has been a very good president of the United States. He, he has done the thing that lots of people said was impossible four years ago. He has built bipartisan compromises around a whole host of major issues, from veterans issues to guns to infrastructure to microchips. He got a lot done. He brought the world together yeah. to stand up for Ukraine. Um, and so there is not a lot of doubt among Democrats that he has the capacity to be president right now. The doubt is, does he have, does he have the capacity to be Donald Trump right now? And this was a bad night. I mean, I'm not going to spin it. It was a really, really bad night. And it's especially awful when something yeah. reinforced the Brian. thing that we were most concerned about. Brian, uh, we are looking right now at live pictures. This is a watch party uh, that, that is happening in Atlanta. This is the president and the first lady there. Let's listen in for a second.
So uh, this is happening right now. Uh, all these folks watched the debate together. Uh, it was told that they were going to stop by this. Uh, we see a lot of energy in this room. Uh, it'll be interesting to hear uh, what the president uh, says. Here's some of the first lady. For being here and for all your support. such a great job. You answered every question. You knew all the facts. And let me ask the crowd, what did Trump do? Why? Yes. So, Joe, I'm going to hand it over to you because we have such a great group okay. of supporters here. So We're going to uh, sneak in a commercial break here. We'll be right back. A live look at the spin room. There's Congressman Robert Garcia and Governor Gavin Newsom. Uh, we wrap things up here on the issue is final Governor sentence Newsom. for everybody here. Last sentence, final thought. I think it's chaos in the Democratic group text tonight. John. In the real world, nobody would hire Biden to bag groceries. <laughs> okay. Brian Goldsmith, last word to you. A uh, sad and uncertain moment in the campaign. All right, so we encourage all of you to continue uh, watching us throughout the election. We're going to be live at the RNC, live at the DNC. We'll have our regular edition of The Issue Is tomorrow night at 1030 with uh, John Favreau joining us. Thanks so much for being with us. We'll have more news tonight at 10. A final look at our poll. Donald Trump, the winner, 93% of our voters. Uh, thanks for watching The Issue Is.